Hello everyone, in the past we've had a showdown between Ohara and Chida, Nakatsu and Yamamoro, but today it's time for another devastating battle between Studio Junior's most well-known figures, Minoru Maeda and Masaki Sato. These are also two animators whose work is consistently confused with each other's. Quite often it seems to be Sato's work being attributed to Maeda. But at the end of the day though, who was the better animator and who drew the best Bulma? Well, join me today as I deliver the answer to all these groundbreaking questions in today's video. Of course though, before that, featured artist is Sean Drawings. He puts out some cool work and does some nice little animations so chuck him a follow. I'm sure Sean would very much appreciate it. But now, back to the video. So when it came to animation, there's not really actually much to compare. Despite popular belief among fans, Maeda did barely any on the series, with credits on only two episodes for key animation. Of course, there's a possibility he could have done a bit of uncredited work if there was a really tight deadline, but his contributions in this area were rather minuscule. Again, I feel this misconception of people thinking he was one of the best animators to have worked on Dragon Ball is largely to do with fans perhaps confusing his work with Sato's. But this doesn't mean he never did any animation in general as outside of Dragon Ball with shows like Majoku Meguchan and Hajime Negan Gyatas is where you can find the majority of key animations work he has done throughout his career. And on Gatters in particular, there was a good amount of movement to his scenes and his character acting was quite fun. I would still say the contributions by Yoshiyuki Mamos and A Production Animators, two familiar names I brought up with the recent video on Hisada, displayed much more expertise in this area. Regardless, his work was still very energetic. But if I was to draw a comparison out of the two, just doing an overview of his work regardless if it was on Dragon Ball or not, I would probably lean to Sato still. His camera work was more interesting, his effects were also definitely more impactful, although interestingly enough there was a time he didn't know how to draw flames. And so fellow animator Hisashi Aguchi handled them within Sato's scene on 153. In terms of movement, I've mentioned many times before that it could be somewhat robotic as there was often a lack of anticipation and follow through with characters' actions, and this stiff nature to it is something he himself remarked on several years ago. Ironically enough, his way of animating at the time actually worked quite well with androids, although I will say Maeda's character acting was a bit above Sato's. But of course, now to one of the biggest praise points around their work, and that is their style and overall drawing skills. So with Maeda looking at his work from the start of the series, his drawings were excellent and displayed great skill in transferring series author Akira Toriyama's style on screen, and this was a pretty consistent trait for some time. However, Toriyama's own style continued to evolve, and by the time of the 22nd Tenkaichi Budokai, you can begin to see Maeda's style lagging behind. By this point, Toriyama's art featured a more defined look to faces and curvature to jaws, ears had also become larger, and there was just a general level of refinement his designs had moved towards. Meanwhile, Maeda was still going with the more cuter look you could say from earlier, with smaller ears and the less defined and rounder look to faces. This was in stark contrast to Masaki Sato and also another member, Katsuyoshi Nakatsuru, who were very much in tune with this new look. And moving forward into the next two arcs, this continues to become more apparent. Of course, that's not to say his work was completely removed from Toriyama's style and that it wasn't good, but this difficulty in keeping with the move to a more angular art style did gradually stick out more and more. By the time of Dragon Ball Z in particular, it's quite clear and began to have an impact on the quality of his drawings. However, outside of that, just looking at his style in isolation, his style of shading with Dragon Ball Z began to become even more detailed with three tones used, which had become the norm amongst his own staff and other animators on the series. The shape design though was a little rough and chaotic at times. His use of the third tone especially was very prominent, but his placement could sometimes come off feeling a little flat. With poses in his character sheets especially, you could find some quite appealing ones. However, other times they could feel rather rigid. In saying all that though, that does doesn't mean there wasn't any great work he did post the Red Ribbon arc, as there would be a side story for Vegeta that he would illustrate, and I think it's here where you get some of his best work during Z. For one, the colour palette and opting for the use of watercolour really captured the aesthetic of Toriyama's own. The drawings are also quite consistently good and carry depth. So in summary, I would say Maeda had an appealing style, and I love how he carried over that cute aesthetic from Dr. Slump. His art had a lot of charm and was definitely the nicest out of the other super Supervisors, but over time the general quality of his work regressed and his approach eventually feeling very commonplace amongst again 
other supervisors. That's not to say he fell behind to the extent of Masayuki Uchiyama from Studio Last House or Tomokichi Takeuchi from Studio Sigasha, but the move away from a rounder art style which drew him to Toriyama's work initially did have a significant impact. But now to Masaki Sato. So after joining Studio Junio, Maeda actually asked Sato to join Dragon Ball staff. And looking at his work right from the get-go, it's not hard to see why. Not only was his art in line with the manga, a quality that very few amongst other studios working on Dragon Ball matched, but his general drawing skills were already above his own supervisors. Perhaps not by a drastic amount initially, but by his fourth episode, that gap certainly becomes evident, as it's here where you begin to first start to see several traits that would become a staple of his work, and that is his love for bold line work, hatching, and three tones of shading. This rugged aesthetic, like I've mentioned many times before, synchronized well with the shift in tone the story had moved towards, and also played a part in giving a strong level of depth to his work. Furthermore, the expressivity in regards to facial expressions mainly, really brought an extra level of drama to his scenes. His poses were typically interesting as well, and especially so as they didn't just stick to the types you would see in the manga. He would also make use of foreshortening at times, which also gave even more depth. I think it should be of no surprise that despite Maeda's strictness with his episodes, noted by Sato himself, that Maeda would almost always leave his and Nakatsuru's work untouched. So, in conclusion, Sato's work was very in line with the evolving art style, and in terms of just general proportions, shape design, poses, and line confidence, certainly was far ahead of Maeda's. And you can see that quite clearly when looking at his corrections in comparison to Maeda's own throughout several of Dragon Ball Z's movies where he and Nakatsuru worked as an assistant supervisor. But with that, let's actually compare and contrast their work as supervisors. Now, with Maeda, surprisingly, he was rather light on corrections. Even when he made them, they typically weren't overly strong, quite often allowing the traits of the key animator to shine through. Of course, that doesn't mean there aren't instances of rather unnecessary ones, but generally speaking, he took a light approach. And this philosophy to his episodes is probably one of the aspects of his work I love the most, as it differed from not only many other supervisors on the series, but within the industry in general. If you're at all familiar with the animation industry, you'll know that supervisors opting for conservative corrections is very much a standard practice. And also when taking into consideration that he was the character designer, it's a surprising but a refreshing approach. And as a result of not prioritizing consistency at all costs, like Supervisor Masayuki Yuchi Ama for example, often downgrading the look to an episode, visually his episodes were some of the best looking throughout the original series and still stuck out through the early parts of Dragon Ball Z. Again, like I've mentioned in prior videos and as we've seen in this one, this isn't a result of his own drawings in most cases. It was thanks to the key animators under him like Sato, but still his approach deserves praise nonetheless. But of course now, back to Sato. So unfortunately, Sato supervised very little in comparison to Maeda. In the main TV series, he only supervised episode 64 and the first TV special alongside Nakatsuru. With the movies, he did assistant supervisor work on up to three and again worked as an animation supervisor with Nakatsuru for movie four. Now, his approach was quite the opposite to Maeda's being rather strong on corrections, even on fellow animators like Hisashi Aguchi and Nakatsuru to an extent. Regardless, in the single episode he did entirely supervise, it was easily among one of the best looking episodes out of the entire Namek arc, and I don't think it's an exaggeration to say that it was movie quality in terms of the artwork. Therefore, his zealous approach to supervision wasn't as much of a negative in this case, considering how exceptional his own drawing skills were. What's also interesting is that the storyboard was delayed for this episode as a result of production and planning issues, and he had only three weeks to work on Raccoon's fight. So again, it's a testament to his skill that this lack of time didn't show through in the final product. And looking back, I really wish he had worked on more episodes as a supervisor, and although I'm sure this is not the most popular opinion and may get me shot, I do again wish like with how Shindo Productions you had Mitsuo Shindo step down from the supervisor role to then have Tadayoshi Yamamoro step up and with Studio Segasha you had Tomokichi Takeuchi again step down with Masahiro Shimanuki and Kazuya Hisada being promoted to that position. Likewise, I think it would have been great if Sato had taken over that role entirely or rotated with Maeda between episodes. It would have been great to have had many more episodes with the quality of 64 or even movies for that matter. In summary though, both made a clear effort to bring Toriyama's art to life in the anime 
and I think the popularity around these two animators is evidence to them succeeding in that area. Of course, that level of success does vary between them. I still appreciate the effort regardless. But before I end the video, I did propose the question of who drew the better Bulma at the start. I know a very crucial addition that I'm adding simply because I would get called out as an absolute liar for not following through. But let's get to it. So Sato actually remarked back in 2018 on how he found it very difficult drawing female characters in Toriyama style and as a result just simply disliked drawing them and so much so that there was actually one time where he didn't want to draw Chi Chi so Iguchi ended up handling his scene. But he also went on to say that if you asked him which was more difficult to animate between Cell and a girl he would go with Bulma and I think it's because he had a very sort of masculine and rough style and with Toriyama's style already being quite difficult to replicate as well striking that balance with a softer approach was probably a bit of a pain. Even in saying that though I think his Bulma looked great Although Maeda's softer traits do work well in this case, having a cute appeal, and his Bulma in the last ending is pretty hard to top, but I'll leave the viewers to decide on that one. But anyway, with that, we come to the end. So as usual, I appreciate the fact you decided to watch this video, and especially so if you stuck around to the end. I've never done a video on Maeda either, so I hope you enjoyed it. But with that though, I'll see you later.